Well, good afternoon. Um, got uh, another short uh, item here. Uh, this is a classic old, well, it's not classic, it's uh, a, a reasonably modern uh, meter, a uh, 34401A, um, which is a uh, uh, Hewlett Packard uh, six and a half digit multimeter. So, what I did is I, I actually uh, bought this, I was sending a bunch of kit uh, over to my father. Uh, who lives in Australia, so I bought this uh, here for him and I'll add it to his kit. Uh, but the reason I'm sending it is so that uh, uh, he has a GPIB enabled uh, multimeter now and can uh, use this to automate the calibration of some of his gear. So let's uh, uh, take a quick look uh, at this guy and uh, see if it works. Okay, uh, I didn't want to uh, unmount my camera so this guy's going to be a little close to the screen, but uh, let's turn this on and uh, we can see the vacuum fluorescent uh, light up uh, past the, its initial self-test. So let's uh, drop in a little, uh, uh, some cables. Let's turn on, uh, what do I have here? Let's just set, uh, say, 5 volts and let's uh, turn that on. And uh, you know, my meter's reading. 5.004 volts. Well, my mid, my supply is reading 5.004 volts. Um, this is reading 5.001 volts. So, you know, it's close enough for uh, initial testing. Let's uh, uh, throw it onto my uh, little arbitrary signal generator, and we will set a frequency of uh, 50 hertz. You know, and then we'll set the amplitude of 5 volts uh, RMS. We'll turn the output on and then we'll select uh, AC volts. Wow, ah, alright. Well, that's a little bit of a bummer. Uh, so we try AC volts uh, and uh, it's failed. Let me uh, grab a set of leads here. Uh, the mod that I bought it off off uh, eBay sent me uh, uh, some leads, but they are the crappiest leads that uh, I've ever seen. Let's uh, just drop that in there, and then uh, uh, I'm just going to grab a uh, grab a known resistance value, uh, and I have uh, one of these, a little uh, DMM check. These things are outstanding. Uh, let's have a look at a known resistance value, 10k. Let's uh, go two wire. Uh, yeah, let's just go measure that. 10k, yep. 100k, yep. 1k, yep. Let's uh, turn this guy on. Go back to DC volts. So we're reading 5 volts there, close up to 5 volts there, let's uh, go to DC, oh. let's shift, and so milliamp DC and I should be reading uh, 1 milliamp, yep. uh, I'm not getting anything there either, okay, well seems like, uh, you know, the, oh, let's actually do, um, yeah, it seems like the continuity, does that work? Yep. Frequency, let's uh, take that out, drop in my leads again. I'm not getting, let's put the frequency up to say one kilohertz. Nope, not getting anything there at all either. So, it looks like we've got uh, something wrong uh, inside, the, inside the meter. So, let me just, let me just put away my uh, little DMM check. Um, so, let's get something wrong in the, the meter there. You know, so you can see the AC voltage is, is jumping around. So, what you can do on these is run a, a full um, 
uh, an actual full test. So let's uh, hold down the shift key, full uh, self test, and then we'll turn it on. And now if we hold the shift key down, we should hear a second beep. And if I let it go, it'll start testing. You can hear the relays uh, uh, clicking. And it's telling us that there's an error. So let's uh, wait until that comes up. And then now I can... Uh, Alright, so we get menu, math, system, let's go into the system menu. Oh, don't want that, want to go up. So system menu, error, let's go there. And so we're getting error 621. Let's see if there's any other errors. Nope. So error 621. Uh, let's go take a quick look at the, the uh, service guide and see what that error is. Alright, quick look at the... A uh, quick look at the, uh, uh, the service manual tells me that uh, 621 is an AC RMS full scale file. And a quick little Google around uh, tells me that uh, um, it is uh, a simple error most likely caused by uh, uh, CR305. So let's uh, pull the unit apart and take a quick look at that. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we've got uh, the uh, meter. So let's uh, you, know, you take the back plate off, then you flip it over. This has been a fairly standard uh, design uh, in this in this era of meters. So I'm just going to take the rear cover off here. Turn the unit around. And do take this little bolt out here. And then we should be able to slide this guy off. There we go. Okay. Now, while I was researching the error, I actually looked up to see where the uh, part was, that uh, C05, and it's actually under this shield here. So let's... Uh, Let's go take this shield off. So there's a little thing underneath it. And then we should be able to pull this out and just slide this out. There we go. And didn't upset anything else. And so if we take a, a zoom in, let's see if we can zoom in on this guy. It is going to be, oh, let's zoom in. It's going to be um, this guy here. So you'll see the, the little cutouts things. It's the second one in to, to here. Now this is a 3.3 a, a volt Xena. So theoretically, I should just be able to, if we leave that there, I should just be able to uh, go and take the Zener out. Let me just clear up some of my uh, solder wick here. So I should just be able to basically take the the Zener out and replace it uh, with another with a, a, a temporary Zener because they're fairly standard uh, things. So let's turn this around so that I have better access to the to the unit. Let me get the componentry out of the road. Let's get uh, this back under the, there we go. And so what I'm gonna go do is just see if I can get, oh, this is gonna be a little tough because this is actually the first time I've tried to uh, remove a component or do any form of soldering using the the camera okay ok 
Okay, so now let me grab a set of tweezers and see if I can just just pull that off. There we go. Okay, so that's the the little guy right there. You know, and so what I'm going to do is just take him out. I'll just drop him over here. Huh? So that I know where he is. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like give it a little bit of flux, grab uh, a piece of solder, and let's see if I can put just a couple of daubs of, of solder there on that, on the pad. I actually don't think I needed to um, do that second uh, that second guy there but um, let's see if now what I have here is this I have a little uh, three and a half let me just hold that in there I have an actual discrete three and a half um, uh, actual uh, Zena, three and a half, uh, three point three volts. Sorry, Zena. So let's let me okay. I think that is in there. I don't pull it too much. Okay. So now, let's go ahead, turn my signal generator back on. Let's plug in. Well, hang on, we don't need to do that because we can actually pass the, uh, the self-test. Let me plug this in here. All right, let me zoom this out. Oh. Okay, let me zoom this out. So let's turn this around and hold this down. Now turn this on. And there we go. Nice little pass. So if you go in, we'll We'll zoom in a bit. You can see the, you know, just for testing purposes, I've got the Xena just sticking out in the air. Let's uh, turn my SIG gen on. I'm on AC voltage and amplitude of five. Oh. Amplitude of 5 volts RMS. Let's turn the output uh, on. And now, it may not necessarily be particularly accurate. Let's zoom that back out. But we're getting 5 volts there. So if I hit frequency, we're reading 1 kilohertz. You know, so I should be able to. Uh, now go and uh, buy a replacement uh, component, put that in, and then ship this out to my, my dad. So overall, uh, pretty happy uh, with that. Simple repair, nice made up. Hope you found it interesting. Catch you later. Bye.